Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight and happy Friday. All the good stuff happens on Friday. The news stacks up and we finally get answers and we have some tonight. After a year of research and interviews, the House Intelligence Committee has finally completed its investigation into that Russian meddling during the 016 election you've been hearing so much about. The final report is out. It's more than 200 pages long. Here's the headline. Investigators found no evidence of collusion or coordination of any kind between the Russian government and the Donald Trump for president campaign. None. So that's bad news for the other cable channels. They probably ought to apologize for the entire last year of their programming, but obviously don't hold your breath. But to the rest of us, there is really no surprise here because there was never any evidence of collusion. It was always a fantasy. By the way, the report does not offer any evidence that the Russian government directed the hacking of the DNC's servers or John Podesta's Gmail account either. To this day, though no one ever says it, no one has ever come up with any proof that that happened, despite the fact that we're all apparently required to believe that it happened or else we're Russian agents ourselves. But whatever. There's not a lot new about the Trump campaign in this report, but there is quite a bit about how Washington actually works. Consider former Director of National Intelligence Jim Clapper. For years, Clapper was one of the most powerful intelligence chiefs in the world. Now he's a cable news shouter and a political activist. He's also a prolific liar. According to today's reports, in sworn testimony to Congress, under oath, Clapper claimed that he never discussed the Steele dossier with anyone in the press. That's untrue. The report reveals that Clapper whispered to CNN about the Steele dossier, and months later, of course, the network hired him as a contributor. He still is one. Yesterday, Jim Comey told our friend Brett Baer that Clapper encouraged him to discuss the dossier with the president. That briefing was later used by CNN and other media outlets to justify reporting on the dossier, and so on in the circular fashion we've been watching for the last year. In, in other words, the whole thing was a setup from the beginning. No one ever really believed the dossier was true or cared if it was true. It was always just a tool designed to hamstring an administration that permanent Washington opposed from day one. Trump was onto this, actually, from the beginning. He couldn't really explain it, but he could smell it, which is his one great talent. And he was right. Of course, he was attacked mercilessly for suggesting the so-called intel community might not be on the level. How dare he do that, they yelped on CNN. They're public servants. They dedicated their lives to keeping you safe, blah, 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 blah. Actually, they're just people. Some of them are great people. Some of them are rotten and unethical. Some would gladly use leaks, deception, and innuendo to reverse the results of an election. Most people understand this, and that's why the phrase deep state is suddenly part of the public conversation. John Brennan is part of the reason, by the way. Brennan is the former head of the CIA, and like Jim Clapper, he's an accomplished and enthusiastic liar. Like Clapper, he's begun a second career as a political activist. Almost immediately after today's report was released, and long before he could have actually read the report, Brennan denounced the entire thing as meaningless. He then said this on Twitter directly to the president, quote, the special counsel's findings will be comprehensive and authoritative. Stay tuned, Mr. Trump. He added an ellipsis just to make it extra ominous, which it was. Okay, so the longtime chief of a shadowy intelligence agency is warning the democratically elected president of our country that something bad is about to happen to him, apparently because John Brennan has inside knowledge the rest of us don't. But don't let that bother you. Don't get paranoid or anything. Don't buy any of those nutty conspiracy theories about the deep state. Everything is fine. Just be sure to obey the permanent government in Washington or else goons like John Brennan will crush you. Terry Turchi is former deputy assistant director of the FBI's counterterrorism division. Molly Hemingway is a senior editor at The Federalist, and they both join us at the top of the show tonight. First to you, Molly. What do you make of this? You read the report. What's the takeaway? Well, it is interesting. They found that after a year of rigorous investigation, there's no actual evidence of treasonous collusion between Trump and the Russian government. That's probably not very surprising. But what they did show was that there's quite a lot of collusion at the highest levels of government to cook up and propagate a narrative of Russian collusion. We'd already learned from this committee about the FISA abuse at DOJ, where they used a research document bought and paid for secretly by Hillary Clinton and the Democratic National Commu Committee to secure a wiretap on a Trump campaign affiliate. And then you picked up on this other thing that is interesting. James Clapper gave contradictory testimony under oath about what he was leaking to CNN. And that is interesting. The whole thing that got everything going was this briefing 
of President-elect Trump, supposedly about the dossier. We later learned it was only about one salacious part of the dossier. Right. Uh, and this was highly placed. This was this was well sourced. Obviously, it went. It, it looks like it went to Clapper or someone close to him. And learning that this was all done, that Comey was asked to brief President-elect Trump on this dossier, and that this was done because CNN needed a news hook in order to justify writing about a dossier. That is a very interesting detail to learn and should put a lot of the coverage that we've seen for the last 15 months in an entirely new light. Well, I mean, Terry, you, you spent a lot of your life working uh, for the federal government, a law enforcement agency that has intelligence components to it. The credibility of the agency is, I'm sure, important to you. It's important to me as, a, as an American citizen. None of this seems to help. I mean, if there's no collusion at the bottom of all of this, then all of this is starting to look very political. And that's bad for the way citizens feel about their government, isn't it? Absolutely. And when you look at this, the real dangerous part of this and the part that should scare every one of us, you just named them the, the heads of the major intelligence and investigative agencies in the United States, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA. All of these people at the top appear to have had just one goal in mind, and that was to be anti-Trump and to make trouble for him after he became the president. I think it's really interesting that all of this idea of unmasking, for example, didn't really start up until after he became elected. And I think that everybody thought, and I think Molly and you and I would not even be sitting here today and talking had Hillary Clinton won the election and Donald Trump uh, lost. I think this whole thing about Russian collusion would have vanished somewhere. But really, uh, that was a shock to the system. And so something had to be done because uh, they, they had to make sure that they, uh, they impugned Trump so that they could maybe be on the way to regain some sort of power again. I really think we have reached a point in, in America where we don't like to talk about this and we weren't supposed to talk about it for years. But the Democratic Party is important. It's part of our two-party system. But it has gone so far to the left that you're seeing all of these kinds of practices and things going on that make you think that maybe the Democratic Party is the party that has a real problem with, uh, with people who have penetrated it. Maybe the Russians have, maybe the Cubans have, maybe the Chinese have. But there's a, real, there's a lot of indicators here that all of these arrows keep going back in that direction. And they're up to their eyeballs in uh, all of these things that we're told were, uh, were supposed to make Trump look bad and look like him, like he was colluding with the Russians, which, which is not the case. Right. Well, maybe they just don't believe in democracy. And so when the results don't, don't go their way, they try to undermine them. I'm really bothered by this tweet and the, and the larger behavior of John Brennan. I don't understand why a former CIA director would send out a tweet, in effect, threatening the president and suggesting that he knows something about the Mueller investigation that the rest of us don't. It's almost designed to convince the rest of us the deep state is real. It does almost seem like it was designed that way. It's also been a pattern for him. I don't know if you remember about a year, a year and three months ago when Donald Trump was critical of intelligence agencies and intelligence community in general, a lot of people said, you better stop it or they will get back at you. And then shortly thereafter, this briefing occurred. It was immediately leaked to CNN and the entire Russian narrative really got going. And this was a hysteria that has caused quite a bit of emotional and financial impact on the United States, including the setting up of a special counsel. And, and you know, we learned this week that uh, James Comey did admit that he had been sharing classified information right. with multiple people. He claims it's not a leak when he shares classified information with people for some reason that makes sense to him, uh, but that for the rest of us would be criminal leaking. And that, that this is involves Comey, Clapper, Brennan, Brennan's highly partisan tweets and highly uh, threatening tweets. They're ominous. And then they leak the transcript of the president's conversations with foreign leaders. I, I just, Terry, want to end with you since, again, you've spent a lot of your life working at high levels of government. I, you don't seem like a conspiracy nut or a crazy person, just the opposite. I don't think that I am. But are you starting to think that there is a kind of loose conspiracy of intent among permanent bureaucrats in Washington? It seems that way. I think there is. And I think that, unfortunately, a lot of the dogma and the ideology, Tucker, of the 1960s, where we were dealing with revolutionaries out in the street, I think a lot of that has now found its way inside government all these years later. And I know people are going to say, oh, wow, there's an old uh, communist chaser. But uh, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like the, the words that were used then are the words that are used now. People may not realize it, but if you look at the uh, Prairie Fire uh, yeah. uh, ideology uh, uh, written by Bill Ayers and several other people back in the 1970s, 
the chief strategy to deal with infiltrating and then, and then overthrowing eventually the United States government is called the resistance. And if you go into the detail of that 181 pages, if you really want to, uh, the words come back and have a real strong meaning and a real ring because they, they're everything we hear today, fascism, racism, Native American injustice, yeah, no, all of these things are back and now they're back, but the people that are using them are in a political party I think uh, behind the scenes, trying to do everything they can to convert us in, in the direction of socialism. And but our maybe. intelligence agencies that are, that are supposed to protect us seem to be part of that now. The baby boom took over, so none of this should surprise us. Th Terry, Molly, thank you both very much.